Hi everyone, let's take a look at number 13 on page 370. Mary leaves the dock, pedaling her canoe at 3 meters per second. She heads downstream at an angle of 30 degrees to the current, which is flowing at 4 meters per second. A. How far downstream does Mary travel in 10 seconds? B. What is the length of time required to cross the river if its width is 150 meters? Step 1. Draw a diagram. In the first part, it says that the canoe is moving at 3 meters per second. And it makes an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the current. So this is going to be 30 degrees. The current is moving at 4 meters per second. Now, in part A, they're asking you to find how far downstream does Mary travel in 10 seconds. So if you draw this diagram applying the triangle law, the first vector, 3 meters per second, is going to be here. And the second vector, 4 meters per second, is going to be connected head to tail. So it's going to be right there. Now, even though the resultant velocity is going to go from here all the way to here, let's denote this as vr, resultant velocity, what they're really asking is how far downstream, downstream. And that's the part that's confusing, so let's break this down. If you think about the resultant velocity, you can break this down to two components, the vertical component and the horizontal component, and this is the part that stands for downstream. That is the vertical component of the resultant vector. And this is the horizontal component, which we'll get back to in a moment. So make sure when you're looking at this, how far downstream does Mary travel in 10 seconds? Downstream means south, vertical component of the resultant velocity. So to organize this, you can compose a table. We're going to break everything down in terms of its components. And we're going to focus uh, specifically on their magnitudes. So again, in the first column is going to be the actual vectors. Then we'll break this down into its horizontal component, Vx, and its vertical component, Vy. So in the first case, if I scale this down, that's going to be 3 meters per second. And again, there are two components here, the horizontal component and the vertical component. This angle is going to be 30 degrees. So if you write this down, the horizontal component is going to be 3 sine of 30 degrees. And the vertical component is going to be 3 cosine of 30 degrees. Now likewise, in the second piece, 4 meters per second going south, there is no horizontal component. And the vertical component is going to be 4. And again, be mindful, we're just writing down the magnitude. So there's no negative 4, even though it's pointing south. We're just going to write down 4. Now, if you divide this into two different columns, in part A, they're asking you how far downstream does Mary travel in 10 seconds. So distance is going to be speed times time. And this is the part that you want to really focus on. Time is given to you, which is 10 seconds. But if you go back to the components, right? The vertical component is going to be 3, cosine 30, and 4. So you're summing up these two components, which will give you the speed. So it's going to be 3, cosine 30 degrees, plus 4. And again, if you take your calculators and you work it out and you round this to the nearest meter, it's going to be 66 meters. In part B, they're asking you, what is the length of time required to cross the river if its width is 150 meters? So in this case, to find time, you have to take the distance divided by speed. And in this case, the distance is given as 150 meters. To find the speed, you're looking at the horizontal component, which will be 3 sine of 30. And again, that's going to be meters per second. If you work this out, it's going to be exactly 100 seconds, or in terms of minutes and seconds, one minute is 60 seconds. So it's going to be one minute and 
40 seconds. I hope this makes sense. <laughs>